Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions, from Plant Talk Radio. To help keep this podcast free, we're partnering with Stoke Seeds. More than just a listing of vegetable and flower seeds, the Stoke Seeds website is a complete resource center with valuable information on seed starting, planting, and harvesting, plus all the gardening accessories you need to make your garden the envy of the neighborhood. Pre-order your free 2018 gardening guide today from stokeseeds.com, cultivating successful growers for generations. We'll have more to come from Stoke Seeds in the next few weeks. Now, on to today's question. Let's say you had a live Christmas tree and you Mm -hmm. did all the things that you recommend people do, which is dig the hole early and cover it up and wait. Uh, What now? Well, what now is to get it undecorated, get it out of the house. Um, For best results, three days indoors in our drier than Sahara climates is is the most ideal. Most families are not satisfied with that. So five to seven days, you have kept that root ball moist but not wet. Now we're going to let that root ball and top cool down. We've been in at 65 to 72 degrees indoors. We're going to take it into the garage, uh, well, detached or otherwise. We're going to let it drop down at least slowly to outdoor temperatures. Then, oh, two, three days of that is plenty. The root ball, if it's an unattached garage, might start to freeze. Not a problem as long as it's freezing moist. Now, that hole that we were supposed to have dug back in late November, uh, we're going to take the straw off the top of that. We've already got it mixed with, with well, either potting materials uh, from old plants that we've, uh, let's just say, thrown out or new composted materials and so on. We're going to uncover that, get that plant planted. We're still going to measure that root ball and be sure that any kind of live tree we're putting in the ground is going to be one to maximum two inches higher than the surrounding soil. Mm-hmm. Even if we have to stomp some thing into the bottom of that hole to stabilize it so it can't settle. Then we put our soil in around the outside edge and we water. Now that sounds contradictory. We're wanting to get this job done, get back in the house, get the heavy coat off and get dried down. Plants need to be wet, especially in the root system. So we're going to water that plant. We're going to water it the day we plant it, and that's to um, almost almost to excess, whatever that may be. You want to be sure the root ball, this, this new soil you put around it, and the surrounding soil are all pretty much in equilibrium. That'll drain out in hopefully two, three days. Water again. Then put the mulch down on top of this to hope hold that water in place, hopefully slow down the, um, well, the absolutes of freezing, Mm -hmm. and that plant should work for you quite nicely. Now, it may shed pretty heavily. Uh, I've seen some live Christmas trees look like the hinges of death and still come along because the buds were not affected. Now, it is not going to be a spring beauty. There is just no question about that, <laughs> at least in some cases. But it, it don't throw it away just because it isn't doing what an, what your neighbor's tree that's established is doing. Be patient. Wait an extra month for it to start to grow. Wait for the new foliage to cover up the ugly innards of the tree. Because I, I know some few have been thrown out alive. There's just no question in my mind. But then again, you may lose a living tree. If so, so be it. Start over again. Uh, I have been in yards over the course of landscape career where trees are 12 to 14 inches, one taller than the next, the next, the next, the next, as the kids grew up. And this goes on into where these trees are now 35 and 40 years old, and you can still, for the most part, tell which was first planted and which was last (laughs) planted, and you can tell how many years they had a live Christmas tree because those trees are still standing there tall to short. And it's most interesting, rewarding, as a matter of fact. And every time mom and dad, grandpa and grandma now, look out the window, they can remember that Christmas that that tree went in. And that's just one of those things that uh, there is no reward in dollars. There's just the satisfaction knowing you did it. They they all live, we hope. Uh, that is not only the children, but the trees themselves all <laughs> lived. And uh, time has moved on, and now you have this beautiful memory at the back of your estate, if you will, whatever. Small lot, big lot, I all, always call the home site the estate. And it might be one tree, it might be ten I have seen up to a dozen in a row along a back property line. The screen to view did all the things that landscaping wise they should do, but they were still tall on one end, short on the other. And what a pleasurable thing to know that this family enjoyed that many years of good Christmas. And if I um, recall what you've said in the past, uh, one of the big mistakes people make when they when they do go out and plant that uh, evergreen type tree is uh, they they dig the hole. Too deep, but not nearly wide That's enough. Right. That's right. It's, it's, you need to go out wider. Yeah. Mark, let's just put a number on that. Uh, 
it is best, and sometimes when you're digging the hole for your life, because you don't know what tree it's going to be, and you can't measure the root ball until you have it in hand. So let's just say, by and large, you've dug a hole 14 inches deep. If you only needed 12, then stomp some heavy soil, even put some bricks or whatever under the bottom, because roots aren't going to grow down. They're going to grow sideways. With that in mind, then, we have stopped the tree from being able to settle in moist soil over the course of the next year. But we need to give that tree a one-year or more head start before it locks horns with our heavy clays, and I won't go into how ugly they can be. But by and large, we're going to put some organic in there. There's a big argument on whether to use organic or not. When you're listening to me, there's always going to be some organic involved. You're going to prepare the soil three times as wide as the root ball. If the root ball is 20 inches wide, you're going to be digging a hole 60 inches wide. 60 inches is five feet wide. Now, Mark, that's going to warm you up pretty good on a winter day. <laughs> but at the same time, we want to get this tree in at the right elevation and give the roots a break to grow in soil maybe nearly as good as what they were growing in in the first place before they get to the second year or possibly third year of growth, lock horns with our ugly clays, then they will accommodate our needs and their own because they've had out, they've been off to a good start. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you have a question for Fred, go ahead and email us, fred at planttalkradio.com. And for the best selection of vegetable, flower, and herb seeds available, go to www.stokeseeds.com. Pre-order your free 2018 gardening guide today from stokeseeds.com. Cultivating successful growers for generations.